going to go ahead and call to order the regular meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals, City of Brookhaven, for Wednesday, October 15th, 2014. Go ahead and start with our roll call. Mr. Bolia? Here. <clears throat> Ms. Balkum? Present. Beardsley? Present. Mr. O'Connell? Present. Mr. Clockadale? Here. Mr. Byers is absent, and I am here tonight as well. I'd like to go ahead and read the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals Chairman's preamble. The Zoning Board of Appeals is, changed, is, is charged with the responsibility of considering special exceptions and variances to certain ordinance requirements after determining whether undue hardship exists upon an applicant based on the strict application of ordinance requirements and based on established criteria. In addition, the board has the power and duty to hear applications where it is alleged that an administrative official erred in a final order, requirement, or decision based on or made in the enforcement <coughs> of the zoning ordinance. The Zoning Board of Appeals does not rezone property. The board has no authority to grant variances for use, density, or height, or to grant a variance in conflict with, the con with a conditional zoning or special land use permit. In addition, there are limitations on the board's authority to vary requirements to the sign ordinance. The board may not extend the time period for temporary outdoor social, religious, entertainment, or recreation activity approved by the community development director. Final decisions of the Zoning Board of Appeals may be appealed by petitioning the Superior Court of DeKalb County within 30 days after the decision is rendered. In addition, I would like to state that this board is comprised completely of citizen volunteers all of the board members are residents of the city as well as your neighbors. We realize that everyone will not agree 100% with decisions that we render as a board. Our goal is to make Brookhaven a better place for everyone through our unbiased interpretation of the zoning ordinance in conjunction with the citizen input we receive at our meetings. With that, we will move into the approval of minutes. I so move. Of the work Minute. session. We need the work session meeting of the minutes. Mr. Boyer, would you like to uh, amend your motion? Uh, yes, uh, approve the uh, minutes of the work session. Okay. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion on the work session minutes for the motion before us? Hearing none. All in favor of approval, raise your hands. Signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. And there is none. The approval of the uh, special called meeting minutes from September 29th. I noticed um, at least one typo. It isn't that big of a deal. I just didn't know if we needed to point out typos. If you'd like it corrected, absolutely. Page four, I'm referenced as Mr. Bauckham. <laughs> <laughs> we can't leave that one? I'm fine. Just, just. <sighs> the last sentence. Page four. The last oh, packet sentence. page four. Page eight. Packet page eight. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm looking for it. Got it. <clears throat> Any other comments? Changes? I think. <clears throat> didn't Mr. O'Connell point out something earlier? Oh, I just had a question about the arrival times. I uh, thought it was strange, but. Might have been my misinterpretation. The time we came out of the back room? Uh, I don't know. I wondered the same. Not too terribly concerned about it. All right. No other comments. I will entertain a motion. I move to approve. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Any opposed? <laughs> Mr. Beardsley, I thought you were going to oppose. <laughs> All right, unanimous. <clears throat> uh, we will move on to organizational and procedural <coughs> items. Mr. Chairman, uh, there was some discussion of the board to possibly uh, review the existing rules and procedures of the board and possibly uh, to amend it. Uh, there were certain sections that were brought up uh, for review. Uh, section 3 specifically, I believe. Uh, 
I apologize. Section three, which deals with the quorum, we just want to restate for the record that um, due to the requirements stated in the zoning ordinance, which states that a quorum is uh, consistent of four members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, we weren't able to change that unless we were to enact a change or amend the zoning ordinance uh, directly. Uh, the changes that did take effect in terms of the uh, rules and procedures, uh, first off is section 15, uh, which removed the language uh, that's associated with uh, a majority vote, stating that it, it, it would consist of four members. Uh, we stated that it's a majority vote of the quorum, meaning a quorum could be uh, four members, a majority meaning in those situations uh, a vote of confidence of three. So that's section 15 that the change has uh, taken effect. Section 17B, subsection 4A, uh, we did, there was no uh, limitation in terms of the persons of non-interest. Uh, individually, they, have, they had a limitation of three minutes, but there wasn't uh, an overall limitation. We did include 10 minutes for your consideration. Um, it's up to the board to decide on how you'd like to proceed with the rules and procedures. The board like to discuss any of the proposed amendments to the rules? If not, I will entertain a motion. Make a motion. We uh, amend the rules um, pursuant to the document before us. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? None. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 <coughs> Any opposed? It passes unanimously. We also, in our work session, had a conversation about, um, I'm, I'm going to say one or two <laughs> other items that we would address under organizational and procedural items. Um, one of those was potentially moving the unfinished business CBA case number 14-48 Caldwell Venture to a later point in the agenda. I'd like to open that up to board discussion. <clears throat> I think uh, it'd be a good idea that if we added an agenda item to be heard right before wherever we move that uh, ZBA 1448 to uh, to add an agenda item to consider uh, hearing from the parties as to uh, some matters that have arisen since since the time of our hearing. Oh. Is that something that you would move before uh, to a spot on the agenda before where we move ZBA 1448? Right. I, I would propose that we have a new agenda item uh, to hear from uh, the parties on some procedural questions uh, as the second to last agenda item for the evening and the last agenda item would be unfinished business 1448. Mr. Smith? Uh, yes, uh, uh, good evening board. My name is Ray Smith. I'm the newly uh, appointed attorney for the, for the uh, ZBA. Uh, I was just informed by the city attorney that um, the uh, item that you were just discussing, the Caldwell uh, venture petition. The applicant has agreed to pull it and go for the mulligan, for lack of a better word, okay. and uh, re-notice it and start over. All right. So, um, is that Mr. Dillard? Yeah. That? Let me just say, yeah. I, we have filed the appeal. What we what we would like is for you to re-advertise it uh, in accordance with your rules. Uh, we would hope that it would be available for the uh, year next agenda in November. Um, and we'd satisfy a lot of these issues that we've had before. We'll go back through and have another public hearing, uh, and then everybody would be on the same page uh, at the end of the day. So uh, the client's given us authority to ask that, uh, that we sort of take the mulligan, I think, as Ray has uh, suggested, and, and go back through it. But we would like for it to be heard at your next regular meeting, if that's possible. Mr. Song, timing-wise, are we able to post and, and publicize that in time for the meeting? Yes, sir, I point. believe we could. Uh, the next scheduled meeting is for November 19th. Uh, from my recollection, I believe the legal ad uh, will go out next Thursday, so we do have time to accommodate that request. 
Yeah, we can repost it. Okay. Yeah, we'll repost it. I assume we got signs and. Well, uh, do you want, Chairman, well, do we need a motion? We I post believe. it. Do you all post it? What yeah, do you want I'll, to do? I'll work with the appellant in terms of the notification motion? aspect uh, because we do utilize um, a sign vendor. So essentially it would be an additional payment for the posting because we do uh, outsource that. But I'll, I'll get in touch with the app, app, appellant to work that out. So would we then, Mr. Song, leave the item where it is on the agenda for the time being, move into unfinished business, and they could request, I don't know, is it a withdrawal or a deferral or what, what would they request there? Organizational and procedural items, we could go ahead and... We can go ahead and do it now? Yeah. Okay. One, one, one other note, if... Um, Mr. Dillard and I have not discussed this. This is a massive record of documents, and uh, we may have discussions as it relates to being able to stipulate what's already in the record as far as what's been presented yeah, document-wise. But I haven't, I'm not agreeing to it. I want to be able to, to talk to him about it. That sounds like a good idea. To well, it sounds like Mr. Dillard's agreeing to it. Well, I think, yeah, because <laughs> you all have heard this twice already. I mean, you've had a chance to look at it. I think uh, in respect to the time, that we would we would agree that the record that's been made thus far would be considered by you at the next hearing, and we would so stipulate. Mr. Chairman, if I could recommend, <coughs> since we're not what, what, we know it was a model, essentially yeah. discussing the yeah. idea of withdrawing it by any means, because then that would right. throw them out of the, the time frame. Uh, it may be worthwhile for uh, possibly the board to consider deferring the case to that November nineteenth hearing. As the in terms of the actual action and stating for for the record that they would be responsible to re-advertise and repost, effectively advertising for that November nineteenth date. Mr. Smith, would that? I, I, well, yeah, what's the best? in terms of how to it's not I believe if we were to defer it, we would I don't necessarily know if deferral is right. Where whatever the 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 correct term would be, in order to effectively <laughs> allow this to sort of move forward, transfer travel over to the November nineteenth. Well, to get around the 60-day rule, why can't we just give you a letter saying that this act is reapplication and, and, and hear it that way so that you get beyond the 60-day problem? Okay, and, and I agree have, with that. And have another public hearing. Where right, public I agree with that. Under, you know, under your We don't have to decide that right now. Do okay. We? All right. I don't want to waive my right. To, I don't want to waive my right to re-argue. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but and I think that we've got a lot of expense. Everybody's got a lot of expense tied up in the pre in the preparation and filing of the record. So I think it's important that you reconsider what you've already done. Absolutely. I guess we've still got the opportunity to to, to supplement the record, but surely we've oh. got about everything in there that you need. So we would want the record as it stands today to be reintroduced and considered by you as a part of the of the uh, record when we hear it again and, and the city the city agrees with that you want to, not you want to continue to supplement the record <laughs> so we can argue the over the seven eight, day so rule. we can over the seven, the day, seven rule. day rule yeah, yeah i guess no we i think i think your rules you're right your rules have got to apply to this next hearing i don't think we can short circuit those okay even In though other words, even though i now question another, whether the seven-day rule is right or not, <laughs> you want but we'll, we'll do that, yeah, right. So we can withdraw it from the agenda at this point of the, our meeting. There is no withdrawal of the application. It'll simply be reposted. We'll reopen public hearing or, or hold a new public hearing at the next regularly scheduled meeting and hear it as a new case at that point. And we do not need any waiver of the 60-day requirement to do this, or we do. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I'll make a motion that we allow the applicant withdrawal ZBA 1448 and uh, allow them to repost with the expectation that will be heard on the November 19th meeting. And I, I'm going to let the staff know that I'm keeping my copy right here. You can reuse it, not reprint. <laughs> <laughs> I think we may need to amend that motion to specify withdrawal from the agenda, not withdraw the application. Right. Correct. I disagree with the amendment. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion of the motion? 
Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes unanimously. We will move on to, were there any other uh, organizational procedural items before I move on to unfinished business? No, sir. Okay. Thank you. Moving on to unfinished business, case number ZBA 14-54, Suzanne Hainan, if I can say the name correctly. Increased lot coverage from 35% to 36.9% for a driveway expansion at 2936 Surrey Lane. Mr. Song? Yes, hi. This uh, variance request Excuse would me. Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. We need Mr. Song to oh, present the case. I'll make it quick. Um, the request is for, to increase law coverage from 35% to 36.9% for a driveway expansion. Uh, as, previously, as previously stated during the work session, uh, the applicant did apply for a building permit, which was within compliance with the 35% uh, lot coverage requirement. Um, as part of the construction, uh, they determined that a larger driveway width would be required, and that's why they have requested this lock, uh, the increase in lot coverage to 36.9. Uh, staff felt that there was not a hardship associated with the request, and therefore has recommended denial. Thank you. Thank you. C could you, for the record, just state your name? Yes. Hello. My name is Suzanne Hainan, and I'm um, up here in. Uh, regards to 2936 Surrey Lane in Brookhaven. Um, so this variance would just allow um, us to go from a 35% maximum land coverage to 36.9%. This would constitute basically an increase of the current lot usage uh, from the current driveway, proposed driveway of 920 square feet to 1,023 square feet. So. 103 square feet and um, the property that I purchased in February 2014 was basically a 1950s one story with a crawl space and this building was constructed in 1953 before the 1956 date of implementation of the DeKalb County Code. So um, the house is considered non-conforming because it was built in 1953 and um, so I'm just, uh, I, the lot is extremely narrow and shallow, and a lot of the homes that are currently being built today in this neighborhood, uh, about 40%, don't comply with the uh, 35% or, you know, with some of the setbacks that you guys have in place. So I'm just hoping that you will allow me to have this variance, and I feel that it's not going to provide a hardship to the neighbors or to Brookhaven. And so, because it was built before the DeKalb County Code, I'm hoping that you guys will allow me to, you will approve the variance for me. Okay. We will go ahead and reserve eight minutes and 34 seconds, should you need any time for rebuttal. Mr. Song, do we have any speaker cards? No, sir, I do not see any speaker cards. All right, then I don't know that we'll need that eight minutes and 34 seconds for rebuttal. We will go ahead and open, excuse me, uh, close public comment and open to board discussion. I think my, my, my concern is that it doesn't meet the first criteria. And in driving around the neighborhood, there seem to be a number of homes that are newer that don't even have a garage so and what I mean by that is that if Ms. Hainan was granted the building permits she had an opportunity to decide how she wanted to use that square footage and the driveway should have been considered at that point I'll tell you I don't disagree I think um Ms. Hainan seems to be relying on the fact that the prior home was uh, built in a non-conforming fashion, but that prior home is no longer in existence, um, and therefore I don't think really plays into the decision at hand. Um, my personal opinion, anytime somebody is building new construction, you need to look at your entire site plan and factor in what lot coverage you need um, and, and stay within the lot coverage unless there is some um, 
extenuating circumstance, you've got a, a teeny tiny little lot and can't possibly build the, the size of home that you would otherwise need. Um, we do have some of those lots, but that certainly, you, your lot did not strike me as one of those. I, I happen to live in your neighborhood. I'm very well versed in the construction going on there and the types of homes and, and um, you know, I personally view this as a, a self-inflicted hardship. Um, that said, I think you do have other options to have a driveway the size that you're looking for um, through, through pervious solutions uh, where you would not, I believe, would not need the lot coverage requirement that you are requesting here tonight. So. Any it's comments? It's hanging one of these dots on your driveway. Is it already a, a pervious driveway design? No, it's not. These dots right here. Oh. Is that, are those brick pavers? What are, why is this No, those aren't brick circle? pavers. That's just the proposed driveway. Okay. So did, did you look at uh, um, a, uh, a pervious driveway? Did you have you considered that? The pavers. Uh, yeah, I, we had, and it just seemed. Um, when I had met with your with people from your planning department, they didn't think it was going to be a problem to increase it by 100 square feet, and it seemed like the easy, you know, the best solution at the time. I'll state my concern uh, for the record. This is a 75 by 150 lot. This is as, as perfect of a lot as you can find in that part of the neighborhood. Um, you know, if you were aware of the 35% lot coverage up front, there were things that certainly um, could have been tweaked here or there to accommodate it. Um, the house is there now. The house has been built. Um, the driveway has not been poured. Um, I, I think there are plenty of options to <clears throat> To, to close this project out at, at no more than 35% lot coverage um, and still have a, a, a beautiful home to sell or live in. Mr. Beersley, just for clarification, that is uh, referencing the construction entrance. And that's just showing the area where it's uh, sort of like the, the gravel area where they take all the dirt off the, the trucks because or the it's equipment. it's an as-built survey in the driveway. Entrance. Right. It, it's, okay. it's part of the building permit, and the CEO is representing the construction entrance. Thank you, Mr. Song. I'll tell you, I thought it was papers as well. Yeah. I'll stay for I just I, I, I agree with um, Bauckham that itself that this should be taken into account prior to, and I think other, if there's other options that can be thought of. I don't think we should put it on the uh, citizens of the, the city to fix things that should have been done by engineering early on. Personally, I mean, I'm the board, the staff recommends denial. That carries some weight with me as well. Well, you any comments? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion. I make a motion to deny ZBA 14-54. Oh, excuse me. Let me close board discussion. Let me not get out of out of order. Now I will entertain a motion. I will reenter my motion to uh, deny ZBA 14-54 to increase lot coverage from 35 to 36.9%. A second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion to deny the application? Please say so. Signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Thank you. Moving on, we have uh, new business. ZBA 14-60, William Berry, to reduce the re required 10-foot setback for accessory structures to 1.4 feet for an existing shed, awning, and pr proposed deck. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, the request is to reduce the required setback associated uh, for accessory structures, which requires 10 feet uh, from all property lines. Uh, this is an existing home that the applicant has uh, acquired. Um, it was built in the 1950s, uh, the primary structure as well as the shed. The applicant has proceeded to uh, add to the shed uh, with an awning and also uh, a, a deck that's in the rear yard. Uh, based upon the shape of the lot and the orientation and location of the existing structures, uh, we felt that the request was warranted. And I just want to also state uh, for the record that the 1.4 uh, measurement uh, that's provided as part of the legal ad 
uh, is to account for the greatest uh, encroachment into the setback. Um, as you can see, the shed currently on the rear property is 2.6 feet setback. Uh, the awning would be 3.3 feet. The deck would be 3.5 feet. But on the, um, the right-hand side of the property itself, as you can see from the site plan that's on the screen, 1.4 is accounting for the closest point of the shed to the side property line. I would also note that the adjacent neighbor in lot 15 um, has provided a letter in support, which, has, which were, was included in the packet. Uh, so staff has recommended approval of the request. Thank you. Thank you. That will open public comment. Uh, good evening, board. My name is uh, William Berry. My wife and I have lived at 1631 Dresden Drive for three years. We originally purchased the home out of foreclosure and have spent, the, uh, spent our money and time restoring the home and the property. We are seeking a variance for the existing shed at the rear of our home and lot. The shed is necessary accessory to our home and provides secure storage for our home improvement and lawn equipment, as well as bicycles and baby gear. Uh, we have also included proposals for an awning to the cover a portion of the existing concrete landing, as well as a six foot wooden deck added to the edge of the concrete landing. This awning provides relief from weather for grilling and shelter for our dog. The deck extent, extension allows for more subtle transition to the ground floor, as well as a safe place for our daughter to play. These projects allow us to continue improvement to our property in the Brookhaven neighborhood and offer us the same benefits as many new builds in the area while enhancing the original charm of our 1950s bungalow. Thank you. We will reserve eight minutes and 57 seconds should we need it. Do we have any opposition? No common cards received. Okay. I don't think we'll be needing the eight minutes and 57 seconds. We'll go ahead and uh, Close public comment and we'll open to board discussion. Has any comments? Start us out, Mr. O'Connell. Sure. A couple questions. Um, I mean, were you aware of the, this has already been built, right? Yes. Were you aware of building permit requirements prior to? No, I wasn't. We have um, been through the permitting proce process for um, renovations to the front of our home. Uh, I did the um, rear uh, structures with the help of my dad, who's an engineer. And since we were the homeowners and we were doing the work ourselves and the projects were uh, at a very low budget, that we didn't understand that we fell in that realm of needing per building permits. So you did obtain permits for the work in the front of the house? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, is there is an existing, <clears throat> I think it's lot 15. Yes, sir. If memory serves me, there is a, there's a shed on that, that property as well. I believe so. Um, white one. I couldn't see it that well from off the street. I didn't necessarily want to go onto the property, but I believe I saw something. I'm not exactly sure what that structure may have been. Out of curiosity, it seems like you have more land over here. Why didn't you build all the way to the lot line when you could have built that? The only exit to the home is located there onto that uh, concrete um, landing pad. So it was really the only place that made sense to be able to have those functionalities of grilling and being close to the kitchen. Is there a drop off there? From the... Okay. Deck to the. Does the grade drop <coughs> along here? It does. It slopes. Um, I couldn't tell you the exact uh, fall, but it does gradually move towards the end of the lot. Is that grassed or improved or anything? Um, no, it has been uh, cleaned and raked, but um, there is no grass yet. It's natural. So you've got a fence there in your backyard, so you have a partially fenced in backyard, and that's the part you. Landscape. Yes, sir. Walk me through the timeline from the time you you realized you needed a permit. Now, how, wh what's the timeline in between? Um, it's been a little bit more extensive. I think that uh, we were originally addressed um, probably sometime at the um, beginning of January. 
Um, my wife was pregnant at the time with our first daughter, and during the process of putting all this together myself, um, she was born. And then, uh, as well as recently, my company got acquired, so we had been going through some acquisition um, and kind of structuring at work. So it, it had been kind of, you know, and I've been doing, again, I've been doing it all myself, so there has been just kind of a little bit of longer length there than what I think you would typically see. You can continue in construction during the time that you... No, sir. No, we, we stopped, and then we've been waiting to make sure that we got to get the variance approval. My position is that it's the shed. The shed where it encroaches 1.4 feet has not been changed. Um, since 1960. Since 1960. Yeah. We have an owner of Lot 15 who doesn't object, and we're hearing no objections from any of the other neighbors in writing and no objections here at the meeting. Uh, I'm inclined to approve the variance. Yeah, I think we would all agree that the shape of the lot lends itself to some unorthodox building and setbacks. I agree with Hope. Um, excuse me, Miss Balcom. Um, I am not at all a fan of asking for forgiveness after the fact. Um, I think that that is uh, wh whether or not it was intentional on your behalf is is something that has been employed by by numerous individuals in the past, and um, I'm keen to that. I think, as Mr. Beardsley stated, the shed um, already being the furthest point uh, to the property line. Um, Probably favor quite a bit here. I'll tell you my position is, um, you know, we we have the criteria that we have to uh, abide by, and you seem to meet every single one of them spot on, in my opinion. Um, not just for the shed, but um, I can't see where you could have done something differently and enjoyed the the use of any kind of a deck. Uh, on that property, you've absolutely met the criteria. So I would. Support. I agree. Agreed. Right. Motion. Hearing that, I will uh, close board discussion and entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve ZBA 14-60 to reduce the required 10-foot setback for accessory structures to 1.4 feet. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion of the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? There is none. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Berry. Welcome, Mr. Berry. Baby in bed. <laughs> Spoken by them. Get the baby Mom. in bed. <laughs> all right. Moving on, we have case number ZBA 14-61, Arden Acquisitions, LLC, care of Laurel A. David, the Galloway Law Group to allow two eight-foot retaining walls along Kusawadi Drive and to allow existing impervious encroachment of 34 feet into the 50-foot transitional buffer to remain. Mr. Song. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As uh, you stated, there are, uh, is a two-fold variance. The first variance is related to uh, allow to allow for an two eight-foot tall uh, retaining walls along Kusawadi and also to allow for impervious encroachment in the 50-foot transitional buffer. Uh, currently, as it stands, uh, the subject property is uh, composed, uh, contains nine apartment buildings. It's currently zoned RM75. The applicant is uh, seeking to redevelop the property for 42 townhome units. Um, going out to the site, it, it's very uh, noticeable that there is a significant drop off along the uh, edge of the property abutting Kusawani. The applicant is. Uh, seeking to uh, erect those retaining walls to account for erosion as well as to account for uh, the structural uh, stabilization of the uh, proposed detention pond that will be at the corner of Kusawadi and no North uh, Cliff Valley Way. And we felt that that would be appropriate and have recommended approval of the variance for the retaining walls and the, for the height of eight feet. In regards to the existing impervious encroachment in the 50-foot transitional buffer, uh, with the effective redevelopment of the property, it's uh, required that the property be brought to compliance with the current zoning ordinance, uh, which requires a 50-foot transitional buffer uh, to be established uh, adjacent to single-family 
uh, dwelling uses as well as single family zoning. Um, there is an existing impervious encroachment there which is currently being used as access uh, to and around the apartments uh, that are out there. Uh, with the redevelopment it appears that there is no need for uh, such a use uh, for such a large expansive land that's uh, currently impervious. In addition to that, uh, the applicant has not given much um, sort of uh, uh, information in terms of the intent and the overall use uh, that's intended for that area. Uh, with that said, the app, uh, staff has recommended denial of the encroachment. Um, staff would stipulate to the report and also the three conditions outlined in the report as well. Thank you. Thank you. We will go ahead and open public comment if the applicant would like to come forward. Good evening. I'm Laurel David with the Galloway Law Group. Um, I've passed out to you a rendered copy of the site plan. Um, the first thing you'll notice um, on the uh, site plan is that uh, we will be taking out that impervious surface in the transitional buffer and re-landscaping that area. Uh, when we got the site plan from the engineer, um, you know, it just left the original paving that was there. And in order to get the application on time, I included that, that variance um, to bring it into conformity. But um, after further consultation with our engineer and my client, we decided that the best thing to do would be to uh, restore it and have it be used as backyards for, for the homes. Um, so what I'm going to ask you then to do is uh, we'll withdraw with that request um, for the transitional buffer uh, variance and then what you have before you tonight would then just be the variance for the two retaining walls. Um, the, uh, if any of you have been out to the property, you, you know that there's about a 20 foot grade difference between the uh, r level of the right of way and the building area um, for where the current apartment complexes are. Um, in that um, area, somewhere between um, almost at the property line and um, it runs in a straight line um, down uh, Kuzawadi, uh, the pipe varies between about zero at the property line and 20 feet um, into the property. So um, it's an 84 inch corrugated metal pipe um, and in order to stabilize it and protect it but also to allow the redevelopment of the property um, we would need to build these retaining walls um, and I, I believe during the work session one of the questions was well you know why is the retaining wall eight feet underground and then again eight feet above ground um, one of the I had to ask my engineer that um, and what he's explained to me is if if we had put in the you know the, the retaining eight foot retaining wall here and the pipe is down here um, in order to stabilize the retaining wall, the weight of the structural requirements would still put putting pressure on that pipe. Um, and because it is a metal pipe, um, they don't want to take any chances, obviously, to anything that will um, destroy it. Um, it's 84 inches, so it's, it's quite a large uh, cavity underneath the ground. So the, the retaining wall is going to be um, dug down to basically the, le the ground level, the, the the lowest level of where the pipe is laying underground right now, um, provide a, a strong uh, stabilization area for the pipe, help protect it, and then above ground what you'll see is, is the eight foot retaining wall. Um, and then that whole area will be re-landscaped. Um, it will be two walls, they'll be stepped, they'll be about 12 feet apart, um, and um, additional landscaping will be in the gap between the two walls. Um, the area um, I noticed is in the new comprehensive plan is part of the uh, Buford Highway corridor area so uh, we're excited about being part of the redevelopment of this area and um, even though the plan hasn't been approved I think we can safely say we'll be one of the first projects uh, in the uh, redevelopment of the Buford Highway corridor. Um, the uh, conditions as presented by staff, including the revegetation of the transitional buffer, um, are fine with us, so we agree with those. And, and um, I guess with that, if you have any questions, I'll ask for your approval. Thank you. Thank you. We'll reserve six minutes and 18 seconds, should we need it. Do we have any opposition? No common cards. No common cards. 
done. I don't know that we'll need the six minutes and 18 seconds. This is a very smooth hearing tonight. <laughs> we will uh, go ahead and close public comment and open to the board for discussion. I had a question for Mr. Song. Have they resubmitted the new site plan with the previous coverage removed? No, sir. This is the first time seeing that. But essentially, the, the layout would remain the same. I, I believe they wanted to just uh, uh, visually provide uh, the, the change in the area that they've identified as impervious within the transitional buffer. Would it help to stipulate to this site plan, maybe? That would be perfectly fine. David? If, if, um, only insofar as we could make it conceptual. I don't, I'm not going to swear that that's exactly where all the plants are going to go. Yeah. But um, if just, you know, conceptually that that, that area will be re-landscaped. And Mr. Beersley, uh, just to state, if you were to approve it with the conditions, Correct. then it would be fine for you to move forward with the, con the site plan that they have Correct. submitted. Correct, okay. yeah. Sorry, we don't need to add this? No. no. But we keep it for the record. One yes, quick. I would like to see this as part of the record to show the vegetation conceptually. One question, how, how, what's the distance? We don't have a, an as-built. How far are the current townhomes away from the street versus where you propose to put the new ones? <clears throat> Sir, if you, if you would approach the podium so we can have that on record. I, actually, I don't know off the top of my head. I was trying to find the as-built survey that has the existing apartment buildings to see kind of where that distance is. But as Laurel already stated, you know, essentially we're just taking the site to where it is and we're just trying to restabilize the grade that's there between Kuzawadi and, and really the tabletop of the site. And, and protect that existing stormwater pipe, and that's really the need for the walls. So, The impetus behind my question was just um, the current site doesn't need the retaining walls, so I, I didn't know if the buildings are going to be that much closer to the street that would require the retaining walls. Um, the buildings, I, I'm trying to remember what year they were built. Um, they, um, I think, are two-story apartment buildings as well. You know, I don't know, Barry, if you want to elaborate at all on just the structural components of, of what you did. Sorry, I was just trying to dig up the as built survey. Who's um, Todd Tewilliger is with um, our Ardent Acquisitions, and um, Barry Etheridge is with um, our engineers. Barry Etheridge, Planners and Engineers. Uh, the site has a lot of topography on it, not just on that Kusawati side, but all the way across the site. Um, there's, I think, seven apartment buildings on the site currently, and they're, between the buildings there's a lot of topography, and what we're trying to do is essentially flatten out a building plate on top of the, the pad up here, cut on the high side, fill in a little bit more on the low side, which is along Kusawati. And so right now the site's tilted like this. We're just trying to do this. Are you balancing the site? Are you bringing it's in balance, any? balance, and it's going to balance Are you bringing in any dirt? No, sir. The finished floor elevation will be higher on this side, which is what is requiring the retaining walls, correct? And I'm not positive about that. Um, if it's higher, if it's a little further away or a little closer, we don't come up to the setback line where we got our current buildings. We're still staying further away from the setback line on Kusawati. So we're not like pushing the envelope all the way to that point. We've had to pull it away from that pipe so we can get these walls in there. I know it's an expensive endeavor. I was just curious. There must be a, there must be a significant need for it to invest that much time and money into the walls. We looked at it and the pipes, you know, to replace a pipe that you know, to last another 50 years is, is very expensive. We thought the walls would be the easier route. Uh, and um, just making sure that these, you know, there's nothing in the future 50 years from now that's going to compromise the integrity of the foundation of these townhome buildings. It's kind of what we're looking at. If we didn't look at that, we could just go ahead and just, okay, let's build two eight-foot walls and not sink the one by the storm line additional uh, 11 feet and, and just go down the road. But we didn't want to do that. I have a question. Mr. Song, 
many times on a, on a feature like this that's being added to a property, especially when we're asked for variance, uh, we're given some sort of elevation drawing that shows what the finish of the wall is going to look like. And many times we're able to stipulate, well, if you want this wall, we don't want it to be an eyesore. And then we may stipulate, they may agree stone, brick, whatever. I, I think it's relevant to us to know how you plan to finish the exterior of the wall on the Kusawati side. Well, Mr. Beersley, before the applicant answers, I mean, one option that is available to the Zoning Board of Appeals, you could always condition it to possibly even state that uh, the building materials or the facade of the wall itself be similar in the building materials associated with the townhomes. That's one possibility. Thank but you. they can elaborate. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, it's designed to be a modular block wall. Um, Yeah, Tom Brookhaven, like what you have around the Costco on the back side. Typical modular block. The back of the Costco isn't visible to the street. Oh, I'm just trying to, yeah, just, it's just well, standard well, modular well, I, I will confess that when you finished discussing our item during the work session, I did have a quick trip over to Marshall's to see what they had. <laughs> <laughs> and the mar modular wall is actually um, opposite the entrance to Marshall's. It's got a texture to it. It's, um, you know, the pieces fit together, but they're offset. It's um, quite attractive. It's, it, it's not like uh, cinder block or anything like that. I agree, Jed. My biggest fear is having an ugly concrete. How, Mr. Song, how would we? Something like this. <laughs> yeah, it's Allen blocks, right? Okay. That makes sense. I'll slow down, slow down. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> the power of the iPhone. <laughs> I was just curious They're how much. Existing building, basically. So. There. Robert Rule. So, so, so for everybody, so, so if I can, we need to can set, it, set it on the table can, over there. We can there. zoom into yeah, it and have it on the public table. record. Yeah, put it down over there. <laughs> Just set it down there and they'll Here's zoom into back. it. Oh, wow. Oh, that's going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> can you hold it up zoom like this? <laughs> hold it up a little higher, closer to the camera. Is that as far as we can zoom? Is there any way he can email that to you? Oh. Didn't really get it fixed. The craftiness of iPhones. Yeah. I guess our zoom is limited. You know, what, one of the uh, concerns I had with the retaining wall was what keeps, you, you're essentially talking over a 12-foot span about a 16-foot drop there, right? What keeps somebody from walking off the edge of that retaining wall? Will there be? There'll be a guardrail on top of the wall. Yeah, okay. any, any wall over 30 inches feet. tall will have a, a guardrail on top of it. Guardrail's not the right word. It, it'll be a black aluminum fence. <laughs> it's not like a big <laughs> guardrail. you got to watch these engineers. <laughs> I'm, I'm picturing a kid on a skateboard coming right. and jumping on a guardrail right. at this no, point. It'll be 42 inches high, at, uh, at least, it'll maybe. Be very yeah. Okay. Did you, uh... We're, look, I'm, I'm, I'm actually fishing for you to give us something to stipulate to on the finish of the wall okay. so that it is appropriate in terms of appearance. Um, but, yeah, and I think the landscaping will actually help a lot with that. It'll I mean, break the, up the plane. Yeah, I mean, Townbrook Haven doesn't have, obviously, the, that landscape. Hmm. Yeah. But we could stipulate to a, a modular block wall. I, I, that's construction. I'm talking about the finish, the exterior. Yeah, I mean, it'll be an earth. It'll be a mixture of earth tones. Um, um, split that's face. It'll, you want to take a look at Mr. O'Connell's Here's a perfect example. computer here. He's got it's a picture pulled up of that block. Above that, it. That's what it the 42 inch. Imagine oh, it would look very yes. similar to that. That looks good. Okay. I mean, I mean, I, I'm. Yeah. No, it, I'm, it's I'm, it's I'm, a standard. Um, is that? Construction material for a, a wall of this type. Something similar. Can you, yeah. can you let them look at that? And see if they'll Absolutely. To that? I'm sure. I'm sure this is exactly. I'm sure this is what they're talking about. Because Glenn, he actually will build the project. It's a typical uh, yeah, split-faced Allen block. I mean, there's only two options for a wall that size: pour concrete with a brick facade or this. Right. Yes, it'll. So it, it may not be that brand, but it'll be sure. a. Very modular similar. block wall, very similar to that. Yeah. 
So we can stipulate to a split face modular block wall. Fine, split face modular block wall. Got it. You writing that down? <laughs> I'm writing it down. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I move. Mr. Bull, yeah, any questions down there? Nope, I'm good. All right. Hearing no other questions, we will close public comment. <coughs> Excuse me, close board discussion. I'm happy to entertain a motion. Work fast. Not quite okay. sure say this one. <coughs> hey, would you like me to make a, I'll make a motion. Um, I move that we approve ZBA 14-61 um, in part only to allow the two eight-foot tall retaining walls along Kusawati Drive subject to four conditions. Number one, uh, the first three as stated in the um, staff's minutes, development shall occur in accordance with the site plan submitted on September 3rd, 2014. Applicants shall obtain building permit for construction of the two eight-foot-tall retaining walls and an engineer stamp detail plan of the retaining walls must be submitted with the building plant permit application. Um, the applicant shall remove all existing impervious coverage located within the 50-foot transitional buffer and replant the area with trees and additional plant material as approved by the arborist. And adding the following stipulation for the retaining walls will have a split face modular block facade and uh, be landscaped in accordance with the conceptual plans provided by the applicant. Suggest an amendment. With a 42 inch or better decorative aluminum uh, fence on top. That's a that's a building code requirement. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's a code okay. requirement yeah. that have some kind. Sure. But they specified a. a, a oh, okay. I'm sorry. I apologize. An aluminum right. fence. A black aluminum yeah. fence. We we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? I would like to just ask Mr. Song or Mr. Smith. Uh, the applicant had stated at the front end that they wanted to withdraw their request for the. Um, 50 foot transitional buffer. Do we need a separate motion to do that yes. first? I, I would assume so. Yes, sir. Well, I specifically excluded I, that. I know you excluded it, but they had requested withdrawal of that. Well, can we vote on second after we vote on this motion? We can do that. Okay. Let's right. not interrupt this motion. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any other discussion? Gonna roll. <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor? Please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? None? I voted aye just for the record. We heard. <clears throat> Are you going to make the next motion for withdrawal? We need a motion for withdrawal. Go ahead, Mr. Boyd. You can go ahead, Mr. Boyd. Uh, make a motion uh, to allow the applicant to withdraw their, I put it away, sorry, um, yeah. request for. Um, to allow the to allow the existing impervious encroachment and the 50-foot transitional buffer on ZBA 1461. Did I do that right? Yes, I believe so. Yes. Do we have a second? A second. Welcome. Any discussion of this motion? It's not on the motion, but I wanted to thank the applicants for coming in with such a reasonable density a nice design, and an improvement to the neighborhood. Hearing no other discussion, all in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much. All right. Moving on, we have ZBA case number 14-62, Mike Reasons. Reduce the rear yard setback from 30 feet to 4 feet for a proposed porch and deck addition. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The applicant is requesting to uh, rebuild and expand uh, an existing deck uh, that's existing in the rear yard. Uh, as part of the deck expansion, they are proposing to uh, enclose a section of that, um, that, that proposed deck. Uh, we felt that based upon the sort of the cluster 
development that's existing in the area and the uh, similar layout in terms of decks that are around the uh, adjacent to the property as well. Uh, we felt that staff could purport, uh, support the requested variance. Um, staff would stipulate to the report and to the single condition outlined in the report as well. Thank you. Thank you. The applicant come forward, please. Yes, I'm uh, Mike Reasons with Deck South. I'm the applicant and plan to um, build the project. Uh, basically, the existing <clears throat> deck is uh, is exactly 12 feet from the house and is at the point of where we want to build it from the depth perspective. So what we want to build is not encroaching any more than what's current, even though about half the house, as you can see, based on the, the layout of the lot, is is inside the builder line. So the only expansion we want to do is a small section just for an open grill area. So the existing deck <clears throat> would be the, the porch would be the same size as the existing deck with a small expansion for an open grill area, but that's to the sides not encroaching uh, although it just it's still everything encroaches just because of the way the nature of the um, setback is so we're, requ we're requesting a 30 foot uh, reduction down to four feet to uh, to build this homeowners hi my name is mason brown this is my wife courtney we're the owners of the property um, we currently have a deck it's you know 20 plus years old it's got wood rot nails are poking up we've got to fix it um, and so uh, when we started to investigate our options for rebuilding the porch, repairing it, we uh, realized that our build line was cutting through the middle of our house. So um, I'm not sure exactly when the, this original survey was put together, but uh, we wanted to ask your approval for this variance here today. Thank you. Mr. Song, do we have any opposition? Um, it's not really opposition nor support, but we do have a comment card. Susan Weiner. Hi, my name is Susan Weiner. I'm the president of the Brookhaven Village Homeowners Association, and I've lived at that location since 2003. Um, I guess when I when I filled that out, I wasn't exactly sure how the process worked. We are in the the Homeowners Association board is in favor of approving the setback. Our only stipulation is that we are in approval of the the current. If you look at the plans, the gabled screen porch, which is essentially just screening in the porch with a slight addition to the. It's a slight addition to the right side to enclose it a little more, which I think makes sense with sort of the architectural style of the design. We are not, the board is not approving the grill deck with the proposed privacy screen because we feel that it starts to encroach a little bit onto the master bedroom of the neighboring house. And then we also feel that it could potentially um, affect the resale value and also of that home and also the enjoyment of the people that live next door. So we are, we are in approval of the setback to fix and change the gabled screen porch. We have, the board has no problem with that. We just aren't approving that additional open grilling deck area. Thank you. Thank you very much. No further. I believe we do also have a couple um, emails in the record. Could we address those quickly? Yes, uh, two emails that we received. First from uh, Ms. Zaliski, who is the neighbor to the north. Um, I believe she expressed opposition um, in that she did not agree with the further intrusion uh, to the privacy uh, of her master bedroom. Uh, the, other, the other gentleman, Felix, Felix Blanco, who is the owner to the south, uh, has no uh, particular objection to the request. Uh, but has requested that the uh, the board consider possibly stipulating um, a lining of vegetation to be provided along the southern property line adjoining uh, those two properties. Thank you. All right. Hearing no other comment cards, we will close public comment and open to board discussion. Can I make a I, I, I just forgot to add, I'm sorry, that we did speak to all the neighbors that are affected in the back. And, you know, you've heard the, um, the other two comments. And we have considered doing the trees, and we've talked to the, um, the Browns about the trees. But none of the neighbors have any problem with the gabled screen porch. It was just that, that grilling deck that was the cause of concern. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <coughs> we will open board discussion. Mr. Chairman, if I am at... Yes. Uh, Add one thing. Uh, I believe um, Ms. Weiner was representing the active uh, zoning board of uh, zoning board HOA, uh, HOA for the uh, subdivision. I just wanted to state on record that uh, whatever decision that comes out of the zoning board of appeals does not supersede any process that they may have 
in terms of their private agreement through the HOA. So uh, an approval doesn't necessarily uh, guarantee the fact that the Browns could build as they have been approved by the ZBA. By the HOA. Well, because the HOA, the HOA has a separate process. They could deny them. They could deny it. They have it's a separate. Subject to depending covenant. on, subject to whatever uh, process they have in place for the HOA, they would have to uh, be approved on both ends to proceed. Okay. Thank you. Companion. Well, technically, yes. Um, <laughs> but in either case, if they were to approve it and we were to deny it, then they would not be able to proceed either way. So it has to be an agreement on both ends. I have a point of clarification on something. Should I do that now before the public comments are over? Or Let us uh, enter in board discussion, and I imagine somebody will ask. Do you, do you have an issue with the vegetation being requested by one of the neighbors? No, not at all. And we're, we're completely willing to work with the HOA, all of our neighbors. So we want to cooperate with everybody and, you know, keep everybody happy in our areas. So... Uh, the grill deck's not, not a big issue. We just want to get the setback so we can re-prepare our existing porch and make it a little bit nicer. Have you sat down with the HOA to discuss your plans? And, and we, We've been in uh, discussion of this for the past several weeks, and we continue to dial it in and make sure that all parties So, yes, I mean, they, they've, we've submitted uh, site designs to them. Um, haven't proposed anything specific regarding vegetation, but, we, we again, we... Uh, so, be fully cooperative so, on that. so you're okay with not doing the grill deck as it would intrude in the adjacent neighbor's yes, master that's bedroom? Correct. Okay. I, I believe the plan is to get this process done and then resubmit a revised plan to the HOA for their final approval. All right. Thank you. For a point of clarification, mm -hmm. so are we, with, are we with changing the request to remove the grilling deck or no? Well, the grilling deck really has it, no. It doesn't fair, really I mean, change the setback. Opinion, it changes setback. Right. So okay, I, fair enough. Um, yeah, but if we condition it to site plan approval, it's going to be on there. Oh, we could make it a condition to exclude the grill deck. Right. That's why we'd need right. to do that. He's just pointing out that we would have to do that. The one other clarification on your um, proposal form: you mentioned a 16 foot by 16 foot screen porch. Uh, and, on the Sir, if you could speak into the mic. Sorry. Thank you. It, it, I may be misinterpreting it. It talks about 192 square foot screen porch, 16 by 16. Yeah, that's. I'm sorry, that's a typo. But it's the same exact footprint it, as it, there now. I mean, the, with a the grill deck, it goes bigger. It's about a foot and a half on one side bigger than what's currently there because it trying to get with the bay window and get the end of that. So, same but there is, as far as depth back. Yeah, as far as depth back from the house, it's the same. Um, and the point I was wanting to make, there was somewhere about a privacy screen. Yeah, I didn't see that. I couldn't see that either. Screening is just a screen, so it's a fiberglass mesh. It's not an actual privacy not screen. Not another lattice work no. or a, a it, It's just going to be a fiberglass mesh. Sure. Thank you. Thanks. Bacadell, anything? No comments. Bolia? I'm good. Any further? All right. Hearing no other discussion, we will close board discussion. I will entertain a motion. Oh. Mr. Song, any suggestions Th for how to word this? Th motion? Throw it out there and we'll uh, <laughs> amend as necessary. <laughs> I can't make the motion, Robert. <laughs> That's correct, isn't it? I can't make the motion. That is correct. Give it a shot. 1462. There we go. Thank you, Mr. O'Connell. Move to approve ZBA 14-62 uh, with the current, I guess, uh, the, with the removal of the extension for the grill deck and then remain in the existing footprint. I don't know that you want to I don't know that it the existing footprint because it's the, uh, you're approving the, the requested setback. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so approving the requested setback. Um, with the, the removal of the deck. Yeah, with the removal of the, uh, of, the, of the grill deck. Of the grill deck extension. And development shall occur subject uh, in accordance with the site plan submitted on September 15th, 2014 to the Community Development Department. That's the grill deck. 
Minus the grilled egg. The grilled egg. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Oh. Welcome. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? You can rebuild your deck. Thank you very much. And I believe that brings us to the end of our meeting tonight. Um, would entertain a motion for adjournment. I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. We are adjourned. Wow.